Hi, I am Gustavo Deco. And I'm Morten Kringleback. We would like to share with you our great expectation for using whole brain computational modeling to understand neuropsychiatric disease. So let's start with a concrete example. Parkinson's disease is a devastating disorder. However, animal models have been successful in developing new treatments for alleviating some of the symptoms. Professor Tipu Assis of University of Oxford implanted a deep brain stimulator in this patient for his hemi-Parkinsonian tremor. As you can see, when the patient turns the DBS off, his tremor returns immediately. And when he turns it back on, his tremor is alleviated. Other neuropsychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia are very complex and don't currently have successful animal models. Something else is needed. So what we propose is to combine computational whole brain modeling with connectomics to create what we call computational neuropsychiatry. In the following, we will explain what is known and what needs to be done. Connectomics, whole brain computational modeling, computational neuropsychiatry, future biomarkers and treatments. Neuroimaging can be used to construct the functional and structural connectivity between different brain regions. Diffusion tensor imaging allows to reconstruct the structural connectivity between regions. The video shows the white matter fibers connecting the different regions where the probabilistic tactography can then be used to measure the connectivity. Functional MRI can be used to map the brain activity. In this example, we show the activity linked to the five senses with vision in red, hearing in dark blue, touch in light blue, smell and taste in yellow and orange. fMRI can also be used to measure spontaneous activity in the brain at rest, which is closely linked to task-based activity. This is particularly useful because it can be used in otherwise unresponsive and difficult patient populations. The brain can be parcelated into regions and the connectivity between these can be quantified. MRI and DTI can be combined with tractography and parcellation to create structural connectivity, SC, which can be represented with the SC matrix. fMRI and MEG time series can be combined with a parcellation to create functional connectivity, FC, which can then be represented with the FC matrix. Graph theory can be used to characterize a brain network. The connections can be represented with the matrix of the connection strength and binarize at a given threshold. The linkage between the structural and functional dynamics can be explored using whole brain computational modeling of neural imaging data. A whole brain model can be constructed using a set of stochastic differential equations coupled according to the SC matrix where the model can be validated by comparing model and empirical spatiotemporal data. The whole brain model is able to best fit the empirical data when the network is critical, so that at that operating point, the system defines a meaningful dynamic repertoire. Such models have managed to simulate and predict empirical neuroimaging data from normal participants. Combining whole brain computational modeling with connectomics has shown great potential for trying to find out what is going wrong in neuropsychiatric disorder. There are many examples of structural and functional connectomics changes in neuropsychiatric disorders. For example, reduced resting state functional and structural connectivity measures were found in two independent studies of patients with schizophrenia. Significant changes in modularity were also found between patients with childhood onset schizophrenia and a control population. But the underlying functional mechanisms are not yet fully understood. This is where whole brain computational modeling is very useful as demonstrated by studies in schizophrenia. They were used to simulate functional networks in schizophrenics and healthy participants and predict the topological changes. Computational neuropsychiatry can help identify biomarkers and potentially help develop new treatments through drug discovery or deep brain stimulation. Already now there are examples of this. For example, a potential biomarker for Parkinson's was found using resting state where patients showed reduced functional connectivity with the basal ganglia network in a wide range of regions. Whole brain computational models have also been used for other neuropsychiatric disorders such as Parkinson's. A computational model showed significant recovery of structural network connectivity as a result of using deep brain stimulation to alleviate the symptoms of Parkinson's. On the present evidence, the great expectations for whole brain computational neuropsychiatry are well founded. Further developing and refining whole brain computational models for understanding neuropsychiatric disorders remain one of the most exciting prospects for alleviating suffering, but also to help better human lives. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening.